morning all. So once again, this is Cinnabon. Cinnabon, say hi to the nice people. Okay, I'm going to put you down, okay? All right, starting things off with the news of the day video for all you fine people for your Wednesday, June the 21st. Uh, starting with news that the National Hockey League is going to play a game in Sydney, Nova Scotia. It will be between Florida and Ottawa, and that will be on October the 1st. So preseason hockey can be kind of a slog, but I mean, when you have it in a third party, third party location, it can be a lot of fun too. And uh, yeah, so looking forward to that. Uh, the actual schedule, uh, John Shannon is reporting that the actual NHL schedule could be released on June the 27th. That feels really early. Normally, I think it's middle of July when we find out the schedule for the following season. But it, it does have the feel that the NHL has been planning out this schedule well in advance. Uh, there are the rumors, of course, that they're going to have a couple of 16 game days. Also a rumor that they're going to look for the longest... Um, the, the longest period of sports where they're end to end, basically. So from like about five in the morning, my time till maybe 10 o'clock at night. Uh, but they're looking for the longest continual run of, of, of on ice play and th they may very well get it. Uh, that would be an interesting world record. I, I don't even know what sport holds that world record, but I know that's planned as part of the schedule this year. We'll see whether or not they got that to work out. I'm guessing it's during the European games as well. So we shall see. Uh, the Calder Cup, Game 7, is tonight between Coachella Valley and Hershey. Hershey, one of the most storied franchises, if not the most storied franchise, in the AHL. Although Rochester's got some, some reason to have that claim and various other teams as well. But Hershey against Coachella Valley, who are a first-year team. The game's in uh, Coachella Valley's building. So with the fact that the home teams won the first six games, tonight should be very entertaining and also... It's free. I know it's free in North America, AHL TV. It's free to watch. Uh, I don't know if it's free for people overseas to watch it, but I think it's a great idea to make this game free. Each game before this, it was eight ninety nine US for uh, a, a single day subscription, which is what I've been doing. Did that for game four, game five, and game six. Because I didn't know if it was going to go seven, and I thought, well, I can spend 30 bucks, or I can just spend 9 bucks and maybe save a few, right? But at any rate, uh, Game Seven's tonight, and it's free. And it's at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And again, I think this should be a really fun game to watch. I have I had debated about whether or not to do a live stream, but because I have to watch on the computer, I, I don't know how a live stream would work since I have to watch on the computer. Um, and of course, then there's the audio and the copyright and all that fun stuff too. So there, just for various reasons, it won't be a live stream tonight. But uh, look for one before we do get to the draft. At any rate, if you want to watch some good hockey... This Game 7 tonight should be fantastic. Again, Hershey's trying to be the team that wins the first road game. If they could do it in a Game 7, they would win, I think it's their 14th title. And uh, yeah, Coachella Valley looking to win their first. Uh, Adam Gaudette is sticking around with the Blues organization. A one-year, two-way contract for Gaudette with the Blues. It's league minimum at the NHL level of $775,000 US. At the AHL level, it's $400,000. And, you know, Gaudette's one of these guys who really more was expected. I know in Vancouver he was expected to become the third-line center. Uh, that's what everybody had thought, that you'd have Pedersen first line, Horvat second line, and Gaudette third line, and that was going to work. Well, now Horvat's with the Islanders, uh, Gaudette's in St. Louis, and for Pedersen, of course, he's up, his contract's up next summer, so the Canucks want to keep him long-term, and not lose all of them but Gaudette uh you know he he can be good we'll see whether or not he can have a bounce back year uh the Blues have have shown that they're willing to give guys a chance who are kind of considered you know tweeners kind of career AHLers you look at Josh Levo this past year uh Callie Rosen's another one so St. Louis will give the, give him a fair chance and we'll see whether or not he takes advantage of it and earns the NHL upside of the contract rather than the AHL downside uh, so the salary cap is jumping a million dollars. Chris Johnston basically saying this is this is being confirmed. The one thing that gets me about this is is something that, and this is where it drives me nuts. So the salary cap in general, I don't really have a problem with the salary cap. I also don't have a problem with the idea that you know you have the the salary cap set up as it is, and I'm I'm going to do a video on that soon, anyways. Uh, but the the flat cap and this million dollar raise. It's interesting because at certain points during a year as a general manager, you have to kind of assume what the salary cap's going to do, right? So as for instance, on July the 1st, once a lot of contracts are a year away from being 
you know, of expiry age, and you're looking to extend, whether it's Matthews and Nylander in Toronto, various other superstars around the league are due for uh, a raise or at least an extension, Sebastian Ajo and Carolina being another. But as a GM, you're going to sit down and talk to them, and you've got to kind of have in the back of your mind, and you'd have capologists as well around you telling you, all right, so the cap next year should be this. I think the salary cap in the NHL, one of its failings is that a GM doesn't know for sure what the salary cap rise is going to be until very, very shortly before free agency. And for most GMs, they've already been planning out next year's finances. So, I mean, it's it's one thing if you're going to have that big jump, but like 2020 is a good example of where they were planning for a big jump and then the league had the pause and then it didn't happen. So for general managers who had signings, in between when the expectation was they were going to have a big jump and then they didn't, well, you end up looking bad, right? Because then you don't have that money left over that you thought you were going to have. I just think the NHL needs to have the salary cap number for the following season known at least six months before we see the the actual uh, free agent period begin. I think that's the only way to make it fair to general managers. I know it's not going to happen, but it's, it is one of those things that I think is is odd. That you have to do your budgeting for the following season without knowing what the budget is until very, very shortly before next season gets started. Because, yeah, July the 1st, that's kind of the start of next season, right? We do the draft, that's at the end of this season, and then July the 1st, that's where guys are moving around and all the free agency and trades and everything's happening. So we're getting ready for next season. And we currently are, you know, not that far away from that. And now they're going to say, oh, well, the salary cap's a, an extra million dollars. Which, again, I understand GMs have been planning for that number, but it just it's one of those things that doesn't sit well with me. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.